Hello and welcome to our next lesson in this topic on transporting animals. What you can see on the screen at the moment is the part of the specification that's relevant to this lesson. So the topic we have been covering is transporting animals. In today's lesson we're going to have a look at the cardiac cycle to include the role of valves and vessels. We are going to look at the fact that cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume. We need to look at how the heart action is initiated and coordinated using what are known as the SAN and AVN. And we're not going to do it in the video, but as part of your independent learning, you're going to start looking at electrocardiograms and thinking how these can be uh, interpreted. Now, for my lessons, I do give you these booklets where you can write your lesson notes in. The specification link, I have literally just cut and pasted it from here onto my PowerPoint. Our learning objectives for today... So the title is The Cardiac Cycle. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to recall and explain what happens in each stage of the cardiac cycle. You should be able to explain how the pressure how the pressure in chambers of the heart affect the opening and closing of valves. And you should be able to evaluate how the electrical conductivity of the heart allows it to beat efficiently. So first of all, what I'm going to do because this was part of the previous lesson. I didn't make a video for it because it should be something that you can do on your own. I just want to briefly discuss the internal structure of the heart. And I've got this diagram, which I have also put on the PowerPoint. So you have got a good um, picture of this. You can go onto the PowerPoint and look at it as well. I will add that into the Google Classroom. Now, if we think about the heart, first things first, this is the external structure, uh, sorry, the internal structure of the heart. A lot of you guys on the work I gave you last week was saying that the external part of the heart has these ventricles and atria. That is the internal, not the external. So first things first, if we put internal... structure that means the inside of the heart it doesn't mean what you can see on the outside so the inside of the heart i raise this because quite a few people made silly mistakes saying that the external structure of the heart consists of these chambers you can't see the internal structure unless you cut the heart so we can just add there I do apologise if this seems so simple, but a lot of people were making this mistake. We can say to see internal structures, we would need to cut the heart. To cut the heart okay so the internal structure is on the inside so the heart consists of four chambers consists of four chambers two Upper atria, which receive blood via veins, so which receive blood from veins. And we've got two lower chambers, which are known as ventricles, which push blood out of the heart into the arteries. So two lower chambers or two lower ventricles. And we can say which push blood out of the heart
into arteries. Okay. So the heart consists of four chambers, two upper atria, which receive blood from veins, and two lower ventricles, which push blood out of the heart into the arteries. Now, just to help you understand the terminology, okay? The word pulmonary means lungs. So pulmonary means lungs, okay? So if it has the name pulmonary in it, it's connected to the lungs. We've said in previous lessons that veins carry blood to the heart and that arteries carry blood away. So arteries carry blood away from the heart. So if you have the pulmonary vein, it is carrying blood to the heart from the lungs. If you have the pulmonary artery, it is carrying blood away from the heart to the lungs. Okay, It's just an easy way for you to sort of um, work out where you are and where blood is going to and from the heart. An important thing that we do need to say is that valves prevent the backflow of blood, as I'm sure you're well aware. So valves prevent the backflow of blood and we can also say that the left side of the heart is thicker as it needs to pump blood to the whole body. So the left side of the heart is bigger as it needs to pump blood to the whole body. Now while we're here there is one other definition I want to define that will help us later on. Okay, stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped from the left ventricle per heartbeat. So stroke volume, stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped from the left ventricle, the left ventricle per heartbeat. I am running out of room. So stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped from the left ventricle per heartbeat, okay? We don't have to worry about the right, we're only bothered about the left. So, before we move on, I want to briefly talk about veins and explain how they work in relation to pressure. So you need to put the subheading, please. Valves of the heart. Valves of the heart. And I am going to add that image back in, but I'm going to make it a bit smaller this time so it doesn't take up as much room. Again, you do have a copy of that diagram on the Google Slides. When we're talking 
about the valves of the heart. On this diagram, they're shown as these white lines. So we've got an atrioventricular valve here and here, and we've got the tricuspid and bicuspid valves here. Okay? We need to think about how they work. The important thing that you always need to keep in mind is that valves only open one way. So they're like a one-way door. So valves only open one way. They cannot allow blood to flow in two directions. They only allow blood to flow in one direction. Now it depends on the pressure in the heart chambers which determine if valves are open or closed. So we can say that pressure in the heart chambers determine if valves are open or closed. If valves are open or closed. Now to explain this, I'm going to draw two diagrams, okay? And I'm going to show them as if they were in a vein, because it's easier to show it that way than it would be to draw them in the heart. But the principle is exactly the same. So on the left, so in this one, we're going to have a valve open. So the valve is open. On the right, we're going to have a valve closed. So our valve is going to be closed. Now just for your reference, the flow of blood would only be in this direction. Okay? So that is our flow of blood. Now if I draw our valves in, we've got our open, our open valve here. And we've got our closed valve here. Okay? Now the reason that this valve is open is because there's higher pressure on this side than on this side. So we've got higher pressure here from the heart contracting which forces the valve open so the blood can flow into a lower pressure area. Okay? On the other hand, so our blood can flow from high to low. On the other hand, if the valve is closed, the higher pressure must be here. High pressure. And what this is doing is it's causing the valve to force shut. Okay? This is because the lower pressure is on this side. Okay, so we can say that if, if higher pressure is behind the valve, is behind the valve, It is forced open. Okay. If the higher pressure is in front of the valve, it's forced shut. So if higher pressure is in front of the valve, Don't spell in front as one word, do you? In front of the valve, it 
it is forced shut. Okay. Now we've said that by doing this, valves ensure that blood flows in one direction. If the blood tries to flow in this direction, the pressure is greater on this side, the valve is forced shut, and the blood can't go back. It can only go in one way. So the final thing we'll write on this slide is that valves prevent the backflow of blood. Valves prevent the backflow of blood in the circulatory system. In the circulatory system. So valves only open one way. The pressure in the chambers of the heart determine if a, a valve is open or closed. If the pressure is higher behind the valve, it forces the valve open and the blood can flow through. If the higher pressure is in front of the valve, the valve is forced shut and blood can't flow back. Okay? Valves prevent the backflow of blood in circulatory systems. So now we are ready to start talking about the cardiac cycle. Okay? So if I refresh our screen and we can start having a think about the cardiac cycle, which is our subheading, the cardiac cycle. Now there are some keywords that we need to be using, so I'm going to start by defining those. The cardiac cycle is a process by which the heart completes its role as a mass transport organ. So our first key term is mass transport. You may have already seen this in your independent reading, but we do need to define it. So we can define mass transport as the movement, the movement of huge numbers of molecules, numbers of molecules, slash ions of a substance in the same direction at the same time. Of a substance in the same direction at the same time. So mass transport is the movement of huge numbers of molecules or ions of a substance in the same direction at the same time. The cardiac cycle is how the heart completes its role as a mass transport organ. So we can say that the cardiac cycle, the cardiac cycle allows the heart to complete complete its role its role in mass transport basically to simplify this because you know I'm a simple kind of guy and I like simple things Mass transport is how um, an organism transports large amount of uh, substances around itself. The cardiac cycle is a sequence of events that allows the heart to contract, pushing blood around the organism. So our next keyword is the word cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle. And I am going to have to have a drink because I'm literally dying. So the cardiac cycle 
can be defined as a sequence, a sequence of contractions slash relaxations relaxations in the heart that allow it to push blood through blood vessels that allow it to push blood through blood vessels through blood vessels so the cardiac cycle is a sequence of contractions or relaxations in the heart that allow it to push blood through blood vessels now I did say this to those of you that are taught at GCSE and I'll, I'll reference it now because it's certainly worth um, talking about the cardiac cycle is what gives the heart its signature da dum da dum da dum if you register your heartbeat your heartbeat literally go or da dum da dum da dum it's this cardiac cycle that gives it its regular rhythm okay now the cardiac cycle causes changes in the volume of internal chambers of the heart when the volume changes the pressure changes, forcing blood through valves, exactly how we just said in the previous slide. So if we can just summarise some of this, we can first of all say that the cardiac cycle gives the heart its the dum sound, the dum sound, Put speech marks. We can also say, and I'm going to put this one in red because it's very important, and I'm going to go over here because I need all the room I can get. We can say that the cardiac cycle, cardiac cycle, changes the volume. of internal chambers of internal chambers and we can put in brackets the atria or ventricles atria slash ventricles to push uh, sorry, cardiac cycle changes the volume of internal chambers, increasing or decreasing their pressure their pressure pushing blood through valves. Pushing blood through valves. Okay. So the cardiac cycle is a sequence of contractions or relaxations in the heart that allow it to push blood through blood vessels. It gives it the heart its dum sound. The cardiac cycle changes the volume of internal chambers. So when um, the atria contracts, its internal volume becomes less. Therefore, its pressure increases and that pushes blood through the valves down into the ventricles. Okay. We can then add final couple of things final couple of things the word systole systole means to contract contract whereas diastole 
means to relax. So the word diastole means to relax. These are two very important words, okay? Because we're going to be using these words to describe how the chambers of the heart act. So when we're talking about atrial systole, that means that the atria contract. When we're talking about atrial diastole, we mean that the atria are, are relaxing. Yeah. Okay? So, we need to refresh the screen and carry on with this. But there is something I just want to make clear before we move on, because this is where we get the most confusion. So we can say that, uh, in fact, I'm going to use a different colour other than red. Atrial, atrial systole. means, so I'm going to add next to this, we can say, it means that the atria contract, therefore, the pressure in the atria, uh, sorry, the volume in the atria becomes less, so atrial volume decreases therefore the pressure inside the atria increases so we can then put and I'm going to put this bit in red pressure in atria increase or increases okay so during atrial systole, the atria contract, the atrial volume decreases, and the pressure in the atria increases. Now we can do the same for atrial diastole. So atrial diastole. Okay. So we can say that during atrial diastole, the atria relax we can say that the atrial volume increases atrial volume increases and therefore the pressure in the atria decreases so the pressure in atria decreases we can do the same for ventricle systole and diastole so in ventricle systole The ventricles contract, so ventricles contract, the ventricle volume decreases, the ventricle volume decreases. And therefore, the pressure inside the ventricles increase. So, pressure in ventricles, pressure in ventricles increase. And finally, well, in fact, we'll do two more. It's worth doing it now. We've got ventricular diastole. Ventricular diastole. We've got the ventricles relax. The 
the ventricles relax. We've got the ventricle volume increases. Ventricle volume increases. And then we can say that the pressure in the ventricles decreases. So pressure in ventricles decrease. Pressure in ventricles decrease. The final one that I just want to define here, because it's worth doing it while we talk about it, is just diastole. Diastole is when everything relaxes. Everything relaxes. Now, these are really important ideas out of all of the slides we've done. Understanding the cardiac cycle is everything on this slide here. This is where people get confused. So, during atrial systole, atrial refers to the upper chambers of the heart. Systole means to contract. So, the atria contract. When they contract, their internal volume decreases. Therefore, the pressure inside of the atria increases. During atrial distal, the atria relax, the atrial volume increases, and therefore the pressure inside the atria decreases. The pressure goes down. During ventricular systole, the ventricles contract, the ventricle volume decreases, and the pressure inside the ventricles increases. During ventricular diastole, the ventricles relax, the ventricle volume increases, and therefore its internal pressure decreases, it goes down. During diastole, everything relaxes. Okay? So, if we just refresh our screen again, make sure you've got all these written down. Those are very, very important because we're going to be referring to them now. We need to talk about the three stages of the cardiac cycle. So we can say three stages of cardiac cycle. Okay. Now, stage one is ventricular diastole and atrial systole. So we can say ventricular diastole and atrial systole. Atrial systole. Okay. Now during this, the ventricles relax and the atria contract. So, ventricles relax slash atria contract. So, the two upper chambers of the heart contract and the bottom chambers relax. This increases the pressure inside the atria. So we can say that atrial pressure, atrial pressure increases, and this pushes blood through the atrioventricular valve. So we can say that this opens the atrio ventricular valve and that pushes blood down into the ventricle. 
pushes blood down into the ventricle. Now if we just combine a couple of ideas that we mentioned earlier, if you remember we says about valves, so if this is my valve, my, my atria is here, my ventricle is here, my valve will go from an air, it, sorry, my valve only allows blood to flow from the atria into the ventricle. Therefore, if the pressure is high in the atria, so high pressure and low in the ventricle, so low pressure, the valve will be forced open and blood will flow down from the atria into the ventricle, okay? Our second stage is the opposite. It's ventricular systole and atrial diastole. So we've got number two, ventricular systole, ventricular systole and atrial diastole atrial diastole okay now this is the opposite the ventricles contract and the atria relax so ventricles contract and the atria relax. What this means is that pressure inside the ventricles increases. So we can say ventricular pressure increases. Okay. What this means is that the higher pressure in front of the atrial ventricular valve forces it to shut, whereas the higher pressure behind the semilunar valve forces it open. So I'm going to put this in a different colour because this again is something that causes a bit of confusion and I will explain it in a moment. So the higher pressure in front of the atrio ventricular valve forces it shut forces it shut Preventing, preventing blood backflowing into the atria. Blood backflowing into the atria. So the valve that separates the ventricle and the atria, so exactly like we did here. The flow of blood is in this direction. I can't remember what colour I used, I think it's that one. It isn't, but it'll do. We've got our atria at the top still. This is the exact same valve as here. It's just a different stage in the cardiac cycle. And we've got our ventricle here, except this time we've got low pressure at the atria and we've got high pressure at the ventricles. Because the high pressure is in front of the valve, the valve is forced shut. The blood cannot flow back. Therefore, the blood cannot go 
into the atria again it's stuck now in the ventricles while the pressure is high inside the ventricles this forces open the uh, semilunar valve okay so we can say that the semilunar valve semilunar valve is forced open allowing blood into the arteries okay now just to help you visualize this rather than me put it on the screen it'll show here so the blood is pushed down from the atria in atrial systole ventricular diastole the pressure is higher in the atria so it pushes through this atrial ventricular valve into the ventricle okay when this ventricle contracts the pressure here forces this shut whereas it opens this one okay let me just go over the final stage i'll add this diagram in and we can annotate it so the final stage the final stage is ventricular diastole atrial diastole so i'm just going to write this down as number three diastole everything relaxes okay so all chambers relax when all of them relax this forces the semilunar valve shut preventing backflow of blood so we can say that the semilunar valve is forced shut and this is important because it allows the heart to fill and it allows the heart to relax or to recover from contraction so we can say it allows the heart to refill and it allows the heart to recover okay so the three stages of the cardiac cycle are ventricular diastole atrial systole ventricular systole atrial diastole and diastole okay just to help you with this i am going to quickly go over it on the screen so we've got a pretty big bit to do still so add an image add our chambers of the heart again and this time we'll make it fairly big okay so during atrial systole the pressure becomes high here so we can put atrial systole atrial systole we get high pressure i'm just gonna put hp in fact i'll put a key here hp and lp hp is high pressure whereas lp means low pressure when the atria contract this creates the pressure inside the atria to go up so we get high pressure here at that point we get lower pressure in the ventricles because the ventricles relaxing therefore the flow of blood will be through this valve okay however when the ventricles then contract the higher pressure is now in the ventricle this lower pressure is no longer the case this forces blood up through this pulmonary valve 
out through the artery. But at the same time, the blood cannot flow through this valve because it's been forced shut. Okay? It's important that you refer to all these contractions in the cardiac cycle in reference to changes in pressure. You must refer to the pressure because if you don't, that's where most people lose their marks. Make sure you are happy with this concept in changing of pressure in relation to opening and closing of valves. Okay? So... Let's crack on with this last bit. Let's crack on with this last bit. Because I am well aware that this video is quite long. However, we have got a double lesson. So it shouldn't be a problem. Can you put the subheading, please? The electrical activity of the heart. Electrical activity of the heart. and underline it. Okay. Now again, I know I keep doing this, but I'm going to add an image. I'm going to add our diagram of the heart. And I'm going to just, oh, I don't want it that big. And I'm just going to put it over here because I'm going to be drawing on it, okay? So the heart is said to be myogenic. Okay, people who have made GCSE, we've already spoken about this. So it's myogenic. What we mean by it being myogenic is that it contracts without the input of nerves. Your brain does not control your heart rate. Your heart beats independent of your brain. However, in year 13, we will look at this idea that your brain can control how fast or slow your heart beats. So... Your brain is like the accelerator and um, the brake in a car, whereas your heart is constantly beating. Okay, Your brain doesn't have to have an input. So we can write um, that myogenic means that it can contract without input from nerves. Okay, so your heart can contract without input of nerves. We're going to talk about how your heart conducts the cardiac cycle. How does it carry out the cardiac cycle without your brain? So we can just add underneath here, I'm going to put it in red, that the heart initiates the cardiac cycle without using the brain. Okay. So we need to talk about how it does this, and we can do that in steps. So the first one, number one, we can say that the sinoatrial node, or SAN, sends out regular waves of electrical activity through the atrial wall. So we can say the sinoatrial node sinoatrial node or we can refer to it as the S A N sends out waves of electrical activity through the atria through the atria causing atrial systole, causing atrial systole.
Now remember, atrial systole is when the atria contract. So the sinoatrial node, which I've done in orange for a reason, can be found in the right wall of the right atrium. So your SAN would be found here. Okay. These send out a wave of electrical activity. And I'm trying to think of a colour I can use that will stand out on that diagram. Um, shall we try green? It'll send out a wave of electrical activity through the walls of the atria, causing the atria to contract. So when the sinoatrial node sends out this wave of electrical activity, the atria contract, causing atrial systole. So this is the first part of the cardiac cycle. Okay. Something that's really important is that there is an insulating collagen tissue that separates the atria and the ventricles so that the um, electrical impulse can't spread down straight away. So I'm going to put that in brown. I'm hoping it will show. So separating separating the atria and the ventricles. We've got these collagen fibers. So collagen fibers that insulate the ventricles from the atria. I'm going to add that in red here. So insulating, insulating collagen, collagen tissue, stops the electrical impulse electrical impulse spreading to the ventricles immediately so it stops the electrical impulse going right down to the ventricles straight away if we think about this in reference to our cardiac cycle this keeps the atria contracting but the ventricles relaxing this is our atrial systole ventricular diastole okay now what happens is eventually the electrical activity hits the atrioventricular node or the AVN. So number two, we can say that electrical activity reaches the atrioventricular node uh, yeah. the atrioventricular node or for short AVN not N straight away AVN this atrioventricular node sends electrical activity down something called the bundle of his in the center of the heart. So this sends electrical activity down the bundle of his and I'll do that in green down the bundle of his okay and we can just put which is found in the septum so we've got the AVN which is found here so this is my AVN. When the electrical impulse 
which we did in this greeny colour, didn't we? When the electrical impulse reaches the IVN, it sends the electrical impulse down some fibres known as the bundle of his. And the bundle of his is found in the septum here. It's found in the dividing wall. So this is my bundle of his. Okay. So when the electrical impulse reaches the IVN, it then sends an electrical impulse down from the IVN down the bundle of his. Our final stage is number three. The bundle of his, so number three, the bundle of his passes the electrical impulse to Perkini fibres, which I will do in red, to Perkini fibres, which cause the ventricles to contract from the base up, which cause the ventricles to contract from the base upwards. So if we were to draw our Pekini fibres on our diagram of the heart, they would connect from the bundle of his and go up through the walls of the heart in the ventricles. These are the Pekini fibres. And the electrical impulse, which we did in this colour, didn't we, would be spread up the walls of the ventricles causing the ventricles to contract. Now, if you think about it, this stage here would bring about, what colour did we use? Was it this one? Let me just check, because otherwise you'll be roasting me. Um, this brings about ventricular, ventricular systole. So we've said, that the heart is myogenic, it can contract without the input from nerves. The heart initiates the cardiac cycle without using the brain. It does this using something called the sinoatrial node, which sends out an electrical impulse through the walls of the atria, causing them to contract. That is what we call atrial systole. There are these collagen fibres between the atria and the ventricles, which prevent the electrical impulse from spreading downwards. Eventually, the electrical impulse reaches the IVN, the atrioventricular node, which sends an electrical impulse down the bundle of his, which then passes the electrical impulse up the Pekini fibres, causing the, ve causing the ventricles to contract, creating ventricular systole. So we get this dum. Oh, sorry, this duh, which causes the atria to contract, the electrical impulse is spreading, it goes down these fibres, and then the dum. So we get duh, dum, duh, dum, yeah, duh, dum, duh, dum, duh, dum, and the cardiac cycle is initiated. So, I hope you found that video useful. You should now be able to recall and explain what happens in each state of the cardiac cycle. You should be able to explain how the pressure in the chambers of the heart affects the opening and closing of valves. And you should be able to evaluate how the electrical conductivity of the heart allows it to beat efficiently. The one thing I want you to focus on is this one at the bottom. The use of interpretation of electrocardiogram uh, traces. I am not going to cover that in the videos. You need to do that as part of your independent study. 
once you have done your independent study on that, if there is something you are not sure about, you are more than welcome to ask me. However, for now, you need to do your independent study on 3.1.2H, because we've covered these two in this video, okay? You need to do these. I hope you have found this video useful. I will see you next time. Please comment in the Google Classrooms or send me an email if you're stuck with anything. All the best.